Right, welcome back. Welcome back. Dow down 180. A little bit of a recovery from the lows of the session, but uh, still w uh, well below 200, almost 200 points below 26,000. A close at the end of the day here uh, could be a monumental avalanche come Monday morning. We'll keep our eye on that. Monumental avalanche of great news hit the uh, airwaves this morning when Frank Morano announced that he would be departing from AM 970. And although I would like to uh, correct a mistake or two that you made today, uh, you have had a fantastic day, and I have nothing to correct. All right. Well, I wish I could say the same about you. And I figured that. Um, for, for starters, you, uh, in uh, you, one, uh, earlier in your discussion, you were trying to cite a quote that basically said that, um, that, uh, once, that democracy will do well until people realize they can vote themselves a raise. Now, you cited that as potentially being from Tocqueville, and um, you then said maybe it was Reagan. Neither of those things were true. This has been, this is a quote that pops up after any liberal wins an election, and they always tr trot it out. Sometimes it's, it's attributed to Hamilton, sometimes it's to the Tocqueville, sometimes it's Benjamin Franklin. Now, the earliest attribution of this quote that we can find is from 1951 when it was attributed to the Scottish political philosopher Alexander Fraser Teitler. Now, here's right. where it gets interesting. Um, we can't find any record of Alexander Fraser Teitler in any of his writings ever, ever saying, saying so this looks like it was something that was either made up or completely mis, mis it misattributed. The earliest recorded writing of this is the, a, a newspaper man uh, for the, a newspaper called the Daily Oklahoman called Elmer Peterson back in 1951. So he wrote this column in 1951, attributed it to Alexander Fraser Teitler, but he was wrong. So he was wrong and you're wrong. We don't know who said it. But it probably, the first recorded use of it was Elmer Peterson. But if people start quoting Elmer Peterson, it doesn't have the same ring to it as if they're quoting Tocqueville or Alexander Hamilton. Well, if I'm going to be wrong, I want to be wrong in all of those people's company. How's yeah, that? <laughs> fair enough. All right. Um, you also, John, as you were teasing our, uh, our, our Friday Funnies segment, you... you, you, you teased the segment by saying we would be joined by Dr. Barry Goldsmith. Barry Goldsmith may have played doctor once or twice, but he is absolutely not a doctor. Uh, not a doctor of anything. Not a medical I thought doctor. maybe he had a PhD because he's a professor. I know, but people work hard for those, those PhDs, John. You can't be throwing those PhD d descriptions around willy-nilly, as you like. Well, that's the beauty of having a television show, because you could save someone $118,000 on a PhD by just repeatedly calling him doctor, and everybody will assume they're a doctor. Well, fair enough. Perhaps that's true. Additionally, John, um, you, you, you were talking about the state of the stock market, yeah. and you indicated that the, the markets were, I believe the term you used was, the, we were seeing artificially inseminated markets. Yes. Now, artificial insemination has to do with impregnating someone without having sex with them. Right, now, and that's exactly, I, what the, exactly what the Federal Reserve did to the market. No, they artificially inflated them. No, they inseminated it with toxic cash sperm. That's how <laughs> the market is pregnant. It's overblown. It's ready to burst. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the, the, when I say artificial insemination in the market, it's, it's scripturally. You know what I mean? It's a it's a figurative statement. Yeah, um, fair enough. And then uh, <laughs> I, I want to. You also said that in China and South Korea, this was just in the Facebook stream. So just the Fighting Fourteen watching us on Facebook now <laughs> will have seen this. You also said that there's a ten percent rate of recidivism of people recovering nah, from the coronavirus. Yeah, there's no evidence of that at all. <laughs> if there is evidence of people getting the disease a second time, it's less than 1%. Yeah. That 10% number 
we can't find anywhere. I exaggerated it. I added a zero because I wanted to see what Walker said. You know what I mean? He's such a liberal. I wanted to understand, you know, he was out there protesting. And I wanted to see what he thought if, if, the, if the rate was even higher. And he did seem a little scared, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no question. Maybe uh, I should call him and tell him it was only 1%, not 10%. During the commercial, Jaden invited him over his home. and um, uh, That's not the first were, time, breaking news. Well, and and he declined. He, he, all right. Oh, he enough. declined. Wow. Yeah, he's afraid. afraid Love on the rocks. I tell you, those two no. uh, kissing stop, cousins. Stop. No, I'm just. I mean, no, like, for true. two guys of such a polarized um, philosophical political views, um, to me, they were always a great experiment in our liquid lunch petri dish because they Absolutely. became great friends with completely opposite views on almost on almost everything. Absolutely. John, um, pick a number between 1 and 10. Uh, 9. All right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The winner of the, uh, the Steiner Sports collectible piece of the dome is none other than Michael Johns. So congratulations Bye. to Michael Johns. Michael Johns, co-founder of the Tea Party Movement, former speechwriter for George H.W. Bush. Michael Johns, and now the proud owner of a slice of the orange men, the Carrier Dome's roof. Uh, Mike, he's the winner. I guess we'll contact him. We'll send it to him. I want to thank all of you out there watching in social media for the grand total of zero direct messages on our Instagram. That was kind of all of you. But, um, you know, I think it's kind of a nuanced gift, and I really appreciate Brandon just whip off the top of his head to give us something to give away. And uh, it's just another example of how, uh, you know, the more you watch, the more you win right here on Liquid Lunch. And, uh, you know, our viewers, I think, are winning every day. Uh, I certainly agree. I certainly agree. All right. No I'm, doubt about it. I'm assuming that um, along with this new uh, place you're going, which hopefully we'll find out about next week, there's going to be a significant interruption in the time you have for Liquid Lunches. Um, but I'm sure, you know, as you grow, you will keep, uh, you know, any time you can give us maybe because the audience is going to drop off significantly if we lose you. So at least lie to them for now and tell them you're still going to be on. Um, and then maybe well, I, will, I will not be here Monday, but I will be, uh, available to be on the show as often as I possibly can be given these new hours. All right. That's fair. And, um, and then when you do hit the big time, keep remember the little people on liquid lunch. Uh, without a doubt, John, absolutely. <laughs> all right, that's Frank Brown. We're joking around. We love you, Frankie, and we love all you out there. Thanks so much. Tune in Monday for more Liquid Lunch. Same bat time, same bat channel, more Liquid Lunch right here.